Hi everyone, I'm Kate from Soul School. Today I want to show you a super useful script that collects all your scene files into one folder. This is very handy if you plan to continue working on another computer or just want to organize your file before archiving a finished project. The script is called Collect Asset. Let's get started. First, let's download the script, which you can do at scriptspot.com. I'll leave the link below the video. Scroll down the page, choose the latest version and download it to your computer. Then open 3ds Max and drag the downloaded file into the workspace. In the dialog box that appears, choose Install Script. A window will appear with a message confirming successful installation, no errors, and further instructions. You can then close the installer window. Now let's add a script launch button to the toolbar. Go to Customize, then Customize User Interface, select the Toolbars tab, Main UI Group, and Sirem Category. Now just drag the button onto the toolbar. I already have a separate toolbar for plugins and scripts. To create such a toolbar, click New and give it any name. OK. If the toolbar doesn't appear, check to see if it's hidden behind the Customize window. Then drag the button to the new toolbar and place it where you like. If you don't need the toolbar, you can hide or delete it. Let's open Collect Asset and explore its functionality. At the top of the interface, there are buttons to check for updates. By clicking the first one, you'll be taken to the Scripts page where you can download and install the latest version. The second button will redirect you to the website of a render farm created by the same developer. Here, you can use the farm's resources to process your render if you don't have enough time or resources on your own PC. In the Asset Status line, clicking the Refresh button will show the number of maps with full paths, files found through other paths that will still render correctly, and files that are missing and won't be displayed in renders. The List Assets function provides a list of maps with their paths and status. This is similar to the Asset Tracking tool that can be accessed with the Shift plus T shortcut. The next section is for specifying an additional folder to search for textures with subfolders ignored by default. In this example, the paths to the HDRI maps are missing. I can enter this path manually and the script will load them. Let's go to List Assets and confirm it. You can also enable the option to search within subfolders. The next set of tools is intended directly for asset collection. Here we can select the directory where the assets will be collected. Create a subdirectory in this line. This option will update the asset paths in the scene and link them to the new directory. It's quite handy and is enabled by default, but can be disabled if needed. We can also activate the option to collect textures from selected objects only. Copy the scene itself to the selected directory and exclude XRF objects from the asset collection process. Let's look at a small example. Suppose I need to send just this chair to a colleague. I select it and create a subdirectory. If I leave this checkbox active, the paths to the chair textures will be overwritten with the new path in the original scene. In this case, I don't need it, so I uncheck it. Then I check only from selected objects and copy max file. And click collect. The script informs me that the folder doesn't exist and offers to create it. Click yes. Name the max file. Wait a bit and it's done. Now we have a separate folder with the desired object and its textures. Let's move on. As you have already noticed, the Collect button starts the asset collection process. It's important to note that the script collects all assets from the scene. Textures, proxy objects, HDRI maps, and so on. However, there's a nuance. If there are materials 
in the material editor that aren't assigned to any object in the scene. As a reminder, uh, assigned materials have white triangles in the preview corners. The textures of those materials will not be collected. In my experience, the script sometimes still collects such textures. For example, if an object with this material was previously in the scene, but was later deleted. It's possible that after reloading the scene, or over time, these textures might be ignored. However, the developer writes that they are not collected, so keep that in mind. If you need these textures, simply create a box in the scene and assign the material to it. Next is the Set Path button. It reassigns all asset paths to the specified directory. The following button is intended for users from CS countries. It replaces Cyrillic characters with Latin ones in file names. The new files will be copied to the specified directory and the paths in the scene will be automatically updated. The next set of functions is designed for creating archives. The first button starts creating an archive. All you have to do is specify the name, the file type, and the directory to save it in, then click Save. The archive will contain the scene and the maps folder. You can create an archive with only selected objects and also choose the version of the max file to be archived. Next are the utilities. Resolve Path assigns absolute paths to all found maps where the script found them. Del Missing removes missing textures. Strip Paths removes all paths, which is useful when preparing a scene for upload to 3D stocks. Del Re Paths removes paths for render elements. These are displayed in the render setup. For example, if you use Batch Render, you will still have prescribed paths that are used to save rendered elements even during normal rendering. For beginners, I'll clarify that Batch Render is a feature in 3ds Max that allows you to automatically render multiple cameras in sequence. Next is the Progress bar, which shows the progress of the script. Then there are the last two buttons, Log and Settings. Log can be useful if you are familiar with coding. The Settings section offers the following options. Enable automatic path scanning when start. This is convenient because you don't have to click refresh every time, but keep in mind that if you are working with large scenes, this process can take some time each time you run the script. The second option is for working with IFL sequences, which are files used for animation. This drop-down menu lets you choose how to select the directory folder. In standard mode, you select the desired folder, click select, and it becomes the current directory. If you choose the alternative mode, the selected folder opens, and if you don't select a specific folder, the current directory becomes the selected one. It's a small detail, but it allows you to choose the mode that's more convenient for you. I'll go back to the standard. The next menu is for selecting the language of the tooltips. And finally, there's an option to select the default archiver type. That's all for today. If you find the video helpful, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out our Patreon link in the description. There you'll find even more useful content on 3D visualization. Learn easily with South School.